Hello, so I will be demonstrating finding the z-scores when you're given a confidence level. A confidence level I will denote by CL for confidence level. Now, with the confidence levels, we are going to use the standard normal distribution, what I have here, we're going to use the standard normal distribution, which is represented by z, so z is distributed normally, and the standard normal has a mu of 0, and a standard deviation, a sigma, of 1. So that's the standard normal distribution. Now we can use the standard normal distribution to create a confidence interval when the population standard deviation is known or when you're working with population proportions. So in any case, with proportions or when you're working with population standard deviation related to the population mean, we will use z-scores. Now we need to find the z-score, but what, how does the confidence level relate to a normal distribution? Well, I'm going to draw a picture to demonstrate this. Our confidence level, our CL, is what we're going to denote in the middle portion of our curve. Okay, The confidence level is actually the area in the middle, and we know area under the curve represents probability when you're going back to the normal distribution. Now, what we need to know, the area, so the area under the entire curve is equal to 1, right? The entire curve. Going along with that, if we have the confidence level to be the middle, well then we don't really know what these pieces here are. I'm going to just call that plus and alpha, this is that unknown part, will equal 1. So the confidence level area plus those green shaded parts, the alpha, would add up to 1. Now alpha is actually something very special. Alpha relates to alpha error and that comes later on in hypothesis testing. But if I rearrange this formula for confidence level is equal to 1 minus alpha, this is the important piece I will be using. So we need to make up a general example. What if I want a confidence level of 95%? So we want to we want to make a confidence interval with the confidence level 95% confidence. What this tells us, if I draw a picture, the middle, the area would be 95%, but area under the curve has to add up to 1. We need to convert the 95% to a decimal form, so we will be using 0.95. 0.95. Now, remember alpha from before? Well, it's equal on both sides. The alpha really split into alpha over 2 over here and alpha over 2 over here. So what we need to do is we need to find what alpha is based on this confidence level. Another way to rearrange this formula, you could take this formula or you could say that alpha is equal to 1 minus the confidence level. That's totally acceptable as well. So to find alpha, we will do 1 minus 0.95 will give you an alpha value of 0 0.05. But remember, it's split into both of these tails. So in both of these tails, we can't put 0 0.05 here and 0 0.05 here. Don't do that. You cannot do that because if you added up all that, you'd get 1.05. That's greater than 1. We know the area under the whole curve is 1. I need to split it in half, so alpha over 2. So I'll just hit divided by 2 is 0 0.025. So 0 0.025 and 0 0.025. So our confidence level is in the middle here. Alpha over 2, alpha over 2 is split up here. Now, what we know is these would be some kind of x value. Now, you find x values by using inverse norm in the calculator. Do you remember how to get to inverse norm? We have to do second vars to get to the distribution menu, and then we will go down to number three, inv norm, inverse norm. This is asking for the area. Now remember, area always reads to the left. Always reads to the left. So x1, what's the area to the left of x1? It is 0 0.025 is the area to the left. 
Now, this is on the standard normal distribution again. So the mu would be 0, and the standard deviation would be 1. Now you see in the calculator, the default is already 0 and 1, because the default is the standard normal distribution. So I'm going to put my area in here, 0 0.025, and then enter, enter, enter. We'll just paste that in, and we get a value. So x1 is equal to negative 1.95. I will round that to 960. Now, the reason this is, so if I round to three decimal places, that 9 would bump up that 9 to 10 truly, but that 10, the extra pieces would bump into the 5, which would bring it to 960. So right here, I'm going to erase the x1. This is negative 1.96. Now, keep in mind, this is perfectly symmetric. Remember, the mean would be 0 because we're working with the standard normal distribution. The mean is 0. So by symmetry, x2 should be 1.96. But let's check that. So x2 should also use inverse norm. But what was the area to the left of 1. Point, well, 1.96 now of this x2 that was there? The area to the left would be the 0.95 plus the 0 0.025, which is 0 0.975. And then you plug in 0, plug in 1, and you will get 1.960. I can show that real quick on the calculator. Second VARS number 3.975, and we paste that and enter. It will give you 1.96 again. But by using my rules of symmetry, it saved me a bit of time. So we found the z-scores. The z-scores are negative 1.96 and 1.96. The z-score we will use is the positive one. We will take 1.96. Now it really doesn't matter if you take the negative one because once you build your confidence interval, you truly are going to the left and you are going to the right. And when you go to the left and to the right, you've used positive and negative at some point anyway. But the z-score is 1.96 for a confidence level of 95%. This is a fact, and this can always be used. We have a special notation. We'll mark it with z alpha over 2. z alpha over 2 would really be 0 0.05 over 2, which is z 0.025 is equal to 1.96. This is another way to state that you're working with a 95% confidence level and our z-score for the 95% confidence level is 1.96. So let me show you some common confidence levels that are used. So we have found this middle one. We did this just a little bit ago. The 95% confidence level, we found the z alpha over 2. We found 1.96 to be the z-score. Now, look at here. I have made a formula for you, just in general, that you can always use. Let's demonstrate this with the 90% confidence level. So I'm going to build a picture. And I know that my confidence level is in the middle. And so 90% would have to convert to 0 0.9 because the area under the curve adds up to 1. And then if our confidence level is 0 0.9, what is our alpha? Well, alpha is 1 minus 0 0.9, which would bring us to alpha is 0 0.10. And what's half of that? Well, half of that is 0 0.05. Right? You could think 90%, really there's 10% left over, so 5% goes in one tail, 5% goes in the other tail. If you add that all up, it adds up to an area of 1. Now what you can always do is do inverse norm to find your z-score. And you see in my formula here, I've put 1 minus alpha over 2. So 1 minus 0 0.05, comma 0, comma 1. When you do this, this is really inverse norm of 0 0.950, comma 1. Now where did 0.95 come from? Well, 0.95 came from add the area to the left, right? You see, 
the area to the left would be the 0.9 and the 0 0.05. Adding that together, you get 0.95. It adds the area to the left. So what I'm going to do, go to the calculator, second vars, inverse norm, 0.95, standard normal, 0, 1. I'm going to paste this and get enter. You see that our value is 1.645, and that does match the table value right here with our 90% confidence level. So it is confirmed. We can denote this with Z.05 is equal to 1.645. That is for a 90% confidence level. Now, one more comment. Remember, how in the first one we did inverse norm 0 0.0501 following the pattern that we did on the first one we did 0 0.025 actually second vars number three and put 0 0.05 by symmetry think about what you'd expect before I hit enter if you know that 1.645 would be the marking to the right what would be the marking to the left? Well, by symmetry, it would be negative 1.645. So if it helps, you can do it that way, or you could do it this way. There's multiple ways to figure it out, but ultimately we'll be using inverse norm. Thank you for watching.